that. But first, I want to talk about another segment of the market that has sort of been memefied before. It's been a popular area with consumers, with retail investors, talking about marijuana, the business of pot. And it looks like it could now get a big boost from Congress this year if... It is a big if. If legislation to legalize weed on the federal level is passed, so far those efforts have fallen short of expectations. But even if the feds dither, states are moving ahead, of course, with their own legalizations. That is potentially good news for companies like Tilray if it moves to the national level. I spoke with the company's CEO, Erwin Simon, and he, remember, was a founder of Haines Celestial, the natural products company. So we talked about his pivot and his model there and how he's applying it to cannabis. You know, I was the founder and CEO of the Haines Celestial Group, which you and I talked many times on. Um, It was a roll-up in the natural organic food, personal care, and protein industry. And when I started Haines in 1993, um, there was not a lot of investors or consumers that knew about natural organic and all the benefits for it. And, you know, Haines grew into a $3.5 billion company and at the height, you know, close to a $7 billion market cap. And today, that's all we hear about in the whole food industry today is natural, organic, clean ingredients, GMO-free. Um, so now let's revert to the cannabis industry. Um, you know, when you hear cannabis, you think of marijuana, you smoke, you think of weed and everything else um, negative that went along with it. But that industry, too, is changed dramatically. When you think of cannabis, you think adult use, and what it ultimately does from relaxation, from giving you a little, you know, energy high, et cetera. And cannabis also used in lots of different medical formats and medical reasons. Um, um, CBD, THC is also used in multiple drinks today. So I see a lot of similarities, um, but I'll come back and say this here, the cannabis industry in the U.S. is over a $100 billion industry. You know, the natural organic food industry was about a $60 billion industry. So the cannabis industry is a much bigger industry, a much bigger opportunity. Um, and my playbook here is to create, you know, the largest cannabis company that's built around consumer brands. And those brands will be built around adult use will be built around medical cannabis, will be built around drinks, edibles, and food. And you guys already have pretty impressive market share in Canada. Um, What needs to happen? What are the inroads in the U.S.? West, but also what legally needs to happen for you guys to expand and grow market share in the United States? So number one today, as you said, we have approximately 14 percent you know, plus market share in Canada with the objective to get to a 30 percent share. And that's both in the adult use and the medical cannabis world. Um, In regards to the U.S., we don't do anything in cannabis today in the U.S. We don't touch any flower. We don't do anything because cannabis is not legal in the U.S. from a federal standpoint. We do sell Sweetwater beer, which is a great beer, and we do sell Manitoba Harvest, which is hemp-infused foods. Um, Until legalization does happen, um, we cannot touch the plant and not touch anything in the U.S., as we're both in NASDAQ and Toronto listed, um, you know, stock exchange company. But with the Schumer bill and the Booker bill that's in place, or that's been proposed today, I see over the next 18 to 24 months that cannabis in some format will have legalization. And what does Tilray do? Um, I think as we look at what companies are out there, that do we look at having options on them to buy it once legalization happens? Do we have some type of relationship with them? Um, the answer is yes, and that will give us the opportunity to be a player in the, in the U.S. once legalization does happen. And do you see yourselves, how do you see yourselves competitively versus the companies that are already based in the United States, in states, for example, where we've seen legalization? You know, I step back today, um, you know, we participate. We're one of the largest market share, you know, growers in Canada. 
um, in regards to Europe, we're one of the largest companies today that, you know, process and distribute medical cannabis. Um, and we do have, you know, a drink business and a food business. We have a strong balance sheet. Um, in regards to legalization happening in the U.S., um, I think we will be ready to partner by when that does happen. But right now, there's very little I can do other than be, you know, own an option or potentially partner with someone when that does happen. And that keeps us a NASDAQ listed company and a Toronto Stock Exchange company, which allows us, you know, to have a different shareholder base. Um, you know, we today trade from a liquidity standpoint, 20, 30, 40 million shares a day. And, uh, you know, that's the difference because we don't do anything in the U.S. But trust me, when legalization does happen, we will be ready um, one way or another to be a part of it. Um, you mentioned the shareholder base, and that brings me to sort of the unifying theme behind the, the companies that we're going to be um, talking to, which has to do with retail ownership, retail interest in the company. And we've seen sort of different approaches that CEOs and leaders have taken to this. How are you thinking about the retail investor community and, and how much you want to sort of court them directly? So, Julie, I love to hug my shareholders and I love to hug my customers, consumers, and, and today also my employees when you can. Um, in regards to our shareholder base today, um, almost 80% of our shareholder base today is a retail shareholder base. And I love it because they're sophisticated, they're educated investors, um, you know, in, in regards to technology, they're very smart um, and they're consumers of our products. And uh, they put their money where their mouth are and they've invested in into Tilray. So very much so, I am a big fan of retail shareholders and I was one of the first CEOs that came out there and said, you know, welcome investor, welcome retail investor. Um, with that, on the other hand, and, you know, at Hain and other public companies that I've been involved in, having the institutional shareholder is something that's very, very important. And today, probably somewhere around, I, and, and, and again, approximately 20% of our shareholder base today is institutional shareholders. Institutional shareholders can own Tilray shares because, like I said, we don't touch the plant in the U.S. And that is, you know, one of my jobs is to get out there and continuously bring in the big institutional shareholders to be investing in Tilray and taking them through our story and our strategy, how we're going to grow this company, um, what we plan to do if legalization does happen, um, where medical cannabis is a big part of our business where ultimately cannabis-infused foods are a big part of our business. So, um, yeah, I would love to have go up to Boston and be visiting a lot of those shareholders in New York that are big institutional shareholders. When it comes to the retail shareholders, have you gotten creative or rethought at all how you communicate with them in terms of technology, in terms of social media, et cetera? Listen, uh, it's a whole new world for me how I communicate with them. It's almost like how do I communicate with my kids every day is the way I communicate with my, you know, retail shareholders. So, yes, um, from a social media, um, I'm out there trying to talk to them every day. As a main stock, we're out there, you know, getting information out. Um, and, uh, you know, from a digital standpoint, um, getting messages out. You know, we're in the midst right now of, you know, looking for our shareholders to approve additional shares because when we did the reverse merger with Tilray, um, there was no shares left within the company and it's important to us to have additional shares to do acquisitions, you know, ultimately with U.S. legalization in place. And, you know, I'm out there almost every day, whether it's telephone messages, whether it's video messages, making sure we get out there and get that right message to our shareholders. Um, you know, unfortunately, it may be a shareholder today and they're not a shareholder tomorrow. So keeping up with your shareholder base, it can be somewhat difficult. But you got to get out there and communicate to your shareholders. You got to talk to your shareholders. And, uh, you know, 
I will come back and say they are educated in regards to what you're doing. That was Tilray CEO Erwin Simon on his relationship with investors.